Hello and welcome to Creative Writing. I am Armin Rose and I will be your guide as we go through the contents of this course. This is part five, the introduction to fiction. Fiction is the name given to a work, specifically a story that is drawn from the writer's imagination rather than from facts or historical information. Fiction can be distinguished from other forms of writing by looking at its main purpose which is to entertain. In literary writing, this mainly involves the short story, the novel, and the drama. These are the forms of fiction according to their length. The first is the flash fiction, also called the short short. It is composed of 250 to 1,000 words. The short story runs from 2,000 to 6,000 words and 8 to 24 pages. It has limited story development, usually only one plot line. A novella comprises 50 to 100 pages. It commonly uses the plot twist in the end. A novella has more room for character development and usually has a second plot line. A novel has no limits regarding length. It has more characters, varied plots, and settings. These are the elements of fiction. We will go through each of these throughout the course. We have setting, character, plot, style, theme, conflict, point of view, symbols, voice, tone, and mood. Let us first study the setting. The setting is when and where the story takes place. The setting plays the vital role in establishing the time and place where the story is happening. The setting provides a perspective to the reader of the environment, milieu, and conditions that the writer depicts through the use of vivid words or other techniques to reveal it. With the setting, the readers can visualize in their minds the totality of the story. Elements of setting may include culture, historical period, geography, and art. The passage of time is also an essential element of the setting. Setting is an important element in a narrative, and in some works, the setting becomes a character itself. Most stories occur in a real-world setting in the past or present time. Here are other forms of setting that may be used in fictional stories. The alternate history, campaign setting, constructed world, dystopia, a fantasy world, a fictional city, a fictional country, a fictional crossover, fictional location, fictional universe, future history, imaginary world, mythical place, parallel universe, planets and science fiction, simulated reality, virtual reality, and utopia. Aspects of the setting are physical world in which the characters live. Some characters are revealed by the setting and some settings are revealed by the characters. We have a plot assisted by the setting, the atmospheric setting, and the theme revealed by the setting. The setting of Alice in Wonderland is a fantasy world where anything can happen. This allowed for the plot line to defy logic, and the characters to be caricatures of real people. The setting of the Hunger Games is a dystopian future wherein society allows children to be sacrificed in a form of game. The Titanic is a fictional representation of a real-life event. The Star Wars franchise has created an entire fictional universe from its movie, TV, and book series. With characters coming from different planets and different galaxies. The setting for the Harry Potter books was a magical world hidden within our real world. And the setting for Avatar is a fictional planet discovered in our real universe. The second element of fiction we will discuss is the point of view. 
The point of view gives the reader or the audience an idea of who is telling the story. The point of view, or POV, is the lens that the author provides its readers so that they will see the story from a particular view or angle. The first person point of view is given by a character in the story, which is usually the main character, but may also be anyone in the story. He refers to himself as I. The second person point of view is given by the reader, who is one of the characters who anonymously makes his way through the story. The third person point of view is delivered from the perspective of someone who is outside the story. The objective third person relies only on external facts and does not reveal the character's thoughts. A limited third person knows that thoughts and feelings of major character and an omniscient third person knows the thoughts and feelings of all the characters as well as all the events that will happen in the future. An example of a first person POV is the book Hunger Games. It tells the story from the perspective of the main character, Katniss Everdeen. Another example of a first-person POV story is Moby Dick by Herman Melville. It tells the story through the eyes of Ishmael, the lone survivor of the crew of the ship that chased the whale, Moby Dick. Another example is Diary of a Wimpy Kid is shown through the perspective of the owner of Diary, Greg. The second person POV is not used as often as the other point of views. An example I can think of, although I'm not sure if you'll be familiar with it, is the Choose Your Own Adventure book series that was popular in the 80s and 90s. The found footage horror stories uh, popular in the early 2000s was also an example of the second person point of view. So this was started by the Blair Witch Project in the late 90s. An example of the third person objective point of view is the Scarlet Letter. It tells the story of Hester Prynne through the eyes of her daughter who narrates the events that happened to her mother before she was born. An example of third-person limited point of view is the Harry Potter book series. Uh, it tells the story of Harry Potter through a narrator, although the narrator uh, knows the thoughts and feelings of the main character, Harry Potter, but not anyone else. An example of a third-person omniscient point of view is the Lord of the Rings book series. It tells the story of several characters as they uh, go on a journey to save the world and uh, the events unfold in different places. And the narrator knows of all the thoughts and feelings of all the characters. The third element of fiction we are going to discuss is voice. Voice is the attitude, personality, and style that the author brings to the story. Voice lets the reader feel how it is to be in the very situation the character is involved. Voice has two characteristics. We have the distant voice and the close voice. The distant voice is usually used by the narrator to provide the background of the setting and situation. The language does not depict emotion. It uses mostly denotation, is accurate, and composed of smooth flowing sentences. I am using the distant voice right now in, in delivering this lecture. The close voice is used by the character to show moments of emotion and development. It uses metaphors, sharply descriptive words, and connotation. So the dialogue used by the characters in the story uses the close voice to express their thoughts and feelings. The next element of fiction is style. Style is how you say what you say. 
style is the way words take on identity on the page. It is a kind of ownership agreement in which a writer lays claim to an identity through the arrangement of words turned into self-revealing lines, turned into fiction. Every author has his or her own style depending on the choice of words that they use in their narratives. When an author uses a diction, sentence, or paragraph style, the product becomes the writer's style, and this should be the consistent throughout the story. When consistency is not observed all throughout, it means that the writer lacks control over his or her style. Here are examples of diction which the writers can choose as a focus of their style. We have mono versus poly, euphonious versus cacophonous, literal versus figurative, objective versus subjective, active versus passive, concrete versus abstract, hyperbole versus understated, pedestrian versus pedantic, vulgarity, slang, colloquial, cliché, informal or standard, formal, literate, assonance, consonance, alliteration, and onomatopoeia. As you can see, these are all figures of speech that focus on the sound and the meaning of words. A writer's sentence style can be as a sentence fragment, simple sentences, compound sentences, complex sentences, periodic sentences, cumulative or loose sentences, or items in a series. When changing paragraphs, a writer can also has his own style. They can change paragraphs when a different person speaks, when there's a shift in time, a shift in place, a change in action, a new scene, or in writing a summary. Another important element of fiction is theme. The theme is what the story is really about. It is why the writer wrote the story. The theme is there to guide the author throughout the entirety of the story. It is the one element that provides sense to all interaction of all the other elements. Theme is a statement or observation of the author about some aspect of the human condition. It depicts and unifies the central topic of the story. The theme can be summed up in a single word like love, death, and hope, or a statement like unrequited love, blind faith, or honor in a battlefield. The theme gives the reader a deeper significance of the story to people's day-to-day -day lives. The theme is what connects the story to real people and real life. The five most common themes used in fiction are the following. Love will conquer all used in most romantic stories. Marriage is a natural and desirable institution used in most romantic stories as well. That man is alienated from society used in most science fiction and uh, stories that talk about social issues. The family is often dysfunctional used in most dramatic stories and that men and women cannot get along used in most comedies. Other common themes are life is not always as it seems, believe in yourself, people are risk adverse, the first impression is often wrong, war is hell, and society socializes humankind to behave in a just and righteous manner. The other elements of fiction, characters, plot, and conflict will be discussed in the succeeding sections. There will be videos dedicated to each of these elements so that they can be discussed in depth. I do not own the pictures seen in this video. Credit for these pictures belong to their owners. The ideas discussed in this video are based on the content standards of the Department of Education. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson.